Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. Welcome to Interstitial Lung Disease Info. In this episode, I'd like to go on a journey in the interesting, fun, and sometimes humorous world of interstitial lung disease. And we're talking about lung fibrosis, pulmonary fibrosis, or lung scarring, and its relationship to birds. So yes, today we will talk about the bird lady in Home Alone. Well, no, I'm just sorry, sorry about the dumb jokes, but you may have remembered, you may remember this movie, Home Alone, and there was this lady with the birds, right? Okay, so that's that's one thing. So I'll, I'll, I'll stop with all the jokes, but basically just go back to telling you a little bit about one type of fibrotic hypersensitivity pneumonitis. It's a full name, but it's basically a condition that sometimes may be called bird fancier's lung, but you could also call it not limited to budgie lover disease, feather pillow lung, pigeon feeder illness, or whatever. Insert your own bird species because these little things, they look very cute, but sometimes in some people who are predisposed to getting hypersensitivity or overreactions of the immune system in their lungs, they can get bird fancier's disease or lung scarring, which we sometimes call fibrotic chronic hypersensitivity pneumonitis. So, that being said, let's just delve a little bit into this topic that is a little bit interesting. So actually, in our field, in my field, basically, we do see quite a lot of cases. But let me clarify a little bit what these means. So what this means. So basically, birds can be a problem in this condition called hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Now, the name itself just means that there's inflammation related to a hyper sensitivity, a reaction, an overreaction of the lungs to something that we inhale. There are different types of hypersensitivity in pneumonitis. It can be acute, it can be subacute and chronic. Usually in acute and subacute settings, this type of disease does not lead to scarring. It's a condition in which someone who is predisposed to getting these reactions inhales something and it could be related to birds. Sometimes someone who goes into a chicken hen, then chicken pen, something like that, inhales a lot of dusts, feathered proteins, etc., and they feel really unwell. They may sometimes even end up in hospital. And that can be a form of acute hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Now, this is related generally to inhaling something from the environment, which causes, like I said, excessive inflammation and excessive inflammatory response in the lungs. It happens generally in predisposed people. It doesn't necessarily happen in everyone. So not everyone will get a bird-related lung disease. So if you, before you start uh, getting rid of all your birds, rehousing the pigeons, the budgies, etc. in your house, do consider that not everyone is actually suffering from fibrotic hypersensitivity pneumonitis related to birds. But it can happen in some individuals. And it can be confusing because sometimes it can look like other interstitial lung diseases. And we are talking about a condition in which we get to a situation in which there is scarring in the lungs, but it's to do with low-grade exposures over a long period of time. Generally, people who develop fibrosis as a result of hypersensitivity pneumonitis, the chronic form, have a low-grade level of inhalation of some kind of an antigen, something from the, the, the environment that we inhale, which is a trigger for the immune system. That's what we call an antigen. And this leads to chronic lung inflammation. And over time, over a long period of time, usually years, this can lead to fibrosis or scarring. So one of these antigens can be bird proteins. But what bird? <laughs> because this is, uh, again, something that becomes really fascinating and interesting because not everyone is sensitive to all the birds. So some may be sensitized only to budgies some to pigeons, some to more exotic creatures that fly. So there is some cross-reactivity between the species of birds, but I have had, for example, patients who were not exposed to budgies and pigeons, but they were actually working in bird sanctuaries where they only dealt with very exotic types of birds. So it's really interesting. So how do these people present to clinic? Breathlessness is usually present. So people who have developed fibrosis or lung scarring due to hypersensitivity pneumonitis do sometimes develop a little bit of a cough, a little bit of a wheeze sometimes, and breathlessness over time, which can be worsening. They send, uh, tend to have some x-rays done. And then basically because of certain patterns on the chest CT scan that shows a some type of fibrosis, mainly affecting the upper areas of the lungs, and where this is where most of the air goes in when we breathe. So basically most of the air when we breathe in goes to the top of the lungs. This is just the physiology. So if we see a lot more scarring at the top of the lungs 
and there are sometimes uh, combinations of areas that looked inflamed in the lungs so maybe there are things like ground glass change so this is something that's a specific description of the radiological pattern maybe something called mosaicism which is again areas of lung that look whiter than others and this can be an indication that there is air trapping so something that means that basically when we breathe in and out some of the air get, gets trapped in some of these areas that are a bit more inflamed than others so so that can be that these can all be radiological features of this type of scarring that we see in hypersensitivity in pneumonitis and our radiologists will generally comment on whether this is related to something like this or if they raise a suspicion of something like this so then the patient may tell us that it's important to get a really accurate history they may tell us that they keep birds or they have kept birds in the past and now for example they have bird feather pillows or bedding or coats or you know duck and down bedding and coats things like that so it could be an ongoing avian exposure. We tend to then do some blood tests as part of the normal ILD workup, which is usually uh, a blood test, and it can find some evidence of bird sensitization. No normally, we cannot test for all the bird species, but we tend to test for bajerigars and to for pigeons. So the little, little cute birds that I showed you at the beginning. And in these cases, generally, we make a recommendation to either remove the birds from the house don't go inside aviaries, don't feed birds in the park where they are flapping their wings and they're looking like bird lady. So things like that. So we try to avoid situations in which these proteins that come off the feathers of birds can be inhaled. So this is really important. If you're watching a bird from far away, it's probably fine. But if you are in an enclosed environment, for example, an aviary, a chicken pen, something like that, it might be a cause for sensitization, especially if the blood tests do reveal high sensitization to bird bird species so such as bajerigars pigeons then the other thing that is important to know is that it can be tricky once we rehouse the birds for example from our house to get rid of all the proteins because these are microscopic things so it's important to do a deep thorough cleaning of the living area bedroom etc because these microscopic particles can linger in carpets blankets etc so if possible if you are suffering with something like this, do ask someone else to do this because while you're dusting everything, you might actually get more of a reaction. So it's really important. But otherwise, in most cases, we may need some treatment because not everyone manages to get rid of all the birds. Sometimes you can have an emotional attachment to the bird. You don't want to get rid of it, but it's important to try to maybe ask someone else to look after the bird, to, to be in direct contact with the bird. So just to try and make sure that you're not really inhaling those proteins anymore because that's the first treatment for hypersensitivity in humanity is trying to remove that antigen that trigger from the environment that's causing this problem the next thing if we cannot always remove the trigger or if we don't find the exact trigger that's the specific bird type or whatever we may need to use anti-inflammatory drugs and here we may need to use as first line prednisolone or which is usually a corticosteroid so this is a medication that reduces inflammation in the body suppresses the immune response somewhat can make people more prone to infection and can have some long-term side effects in terms of developing high blood pressure, diabetes, etc. So it's important to make sure that we've tried our best to remove the triggers before we start the medication. Sometimes we need to start the medication because the situation in which that patient is may require more rapid, more aggressive intervention. But generally what happens is that if we don't remove the trigger, you may respond well to corticosteroid treatment, but if we stop the treatment, the disease comes back. So it's important to monitor long-term. It's not a short-term treatment. We're committing to a long-term therapy. So if we, are, if we are identifying a trigger, such as birds, we are actually lucky because in more than half of cases of hypersensitivity in pneumonitis, this type of condition, we don't identify the trigger. So it may be something else. It may not be the birds. It could be something else. But if we have a trigger, we know that the patient is sensitized to that. It's important to try to remove it. And obviously, we then move on to other treatments. So if we cannot uh, control the condition just with the steroids alone, or if we require high doses, or the treatment is prolonged for many years, we may try other immune suppressants, other medications that suppress the immune system, other anti-inflammatory treatment, to either reduce the dose of steroids that we need. So we call this situation steroid sparing medications. We give steroid sparing drugs such as mycophenolate, for example. This could be one, one option or, or others, depending on what your doctor may recommend. And even if 
despite all these treatments, steroids, trying to remove the antigen, maybe going on another immunosuppressant to, re to, to remove the steroids, if the patient is still getting worse and worse fibrosis, lung scarring, we may need to add on other treatments such as antifibrotic therapies. For example, in this uh, time, uh, 2024, or when I'm recording this video, early 2024, we have one that is approved. It's called nintedinib that can slow down progression over time, and it's an add-on therapy in these situations. But it, you can see, treatment for hypersensitivity pneumonitis can get very, very complicated. And it's really important because some patients may have a strong attachment to these little cute birds that they've had. I've had patients who really didn't want to get rid of the birds. They preferred to take the treatment rather than get rid of their emotional support. And I do understand that fully. They are super cute pets. I've had budgies when I was a kid. They're amazing. But you need to kind of work out what your priorities are and try to find maybe an alternative way to see the birds, to visit the birds. But maybe someone else takes care of them. It's just to make sure that you're prioritizing your health. And options would be to either rehouse the birds, visit them. I've had patients who have taken the birds to a friend, to a family member who's looking after the birds, or maybe the partner is actually going into the aviary to feed the birds, to clean the cages, etc. Um, you can feed them from, you know, far away. You can leave some seeds somewhere, watch them from far away, see the birds outside. You can get into bird watching, get some binoculars, get into photography to take pictures of birds from far away, but just to try and keep a distance if there is a confirmation that the birds are actually the trigger for the condition for this hypersensitivity pneumonitis. I hope you found this interesting, and if you have further questions, do leave them in the comment section below, but the field of hypersensitivity pneumonitis, so these conditions in which uh, we can get inflammation and eventually lung scarring of, uh, because of a trigger from the environment, they're fascinating because it can be triggered by almost anything. So hopefully this was interesting. If you have further questions, drop them in the comment section below. All the best. Good health.